gone through our pencil exploration to see what our pencils actually do. Uh, we're going to dive into our shading exercise <clears throat> and we're going to do a couple different things, uh, but they're also the same to get the repetition down on how we're going to handle this. Uh, I'm going to have my students use only a 2B pencil, only a 2B pencil on this whole exercise. Now you could do one of these for every single pencils, every single pencil that we have, but um, we don't have that kind of time. And I, I chose the 2B because you can still get pretty dark, like this dark, dark uh, that we've got there. Um, but you can also get fairly light with the 2B. You can't get extremely light like a, a 4H or a 2H or something like that, but we can get somewhat light um, on that. And what we have, what, what we have here, so I've got a grayscale here. Uh, I, I might put up a grayscale on the uh, on the video as well so you can see it a little clearer or just in a different form, but this is a grayscale and there's 10 uh, scales and we've got 10 scales here as well. And then we've got uh, just one long value that we're gonna end up making blend. Okay, and we're not even gonna use the blending stub. I don't want an eraser and I don't want a blending stub uh, to be used while we're practicing. I'll explain that in a little bit, but um, we need to mimic this as close as we can, this 100% here, this 90 here, 80 here, so on and so forth. And zero is nothing, it's white. So we don't have to do anything here. When we go through and shade this, this last area here should be white. It should fade off about here and become white, okay? This is set up the same way, but this doesn't have 10 spots. This is only gonna have uh, eight spots. So um, what we need to do is what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll figure out, do we wanna leave out the 100 and make this 90 and then leave out maybe a 30 and just get from 40 to 20? Um, plus my printout that I have here that my students use, um, they, the copier doesn't do really well with value. So this is too dark right here. These two uh, circles are a little too dark. So when you're, sh when you're shading this, if you're looking at mine, um, you, you don't want to make this, this dark. You're going to go through the value scale. Um, as you see it up here, as you do it. And then also, you know, if you have a, a, a value scale like this, uh, make sure that you follow that. And again, in this area, we will just skip 30 maybe, and then maybe we skip 80, or we just make this 90 instead of 100, so on and so forth. So up here, what I want you to do, this doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Uh, nothing I ever ask my students to do is perfect, especially since we're using this word student. They're students because they're learning. So I expect them, you, if you're watching, um, if you were my class, um, I don't expect everything to be perfect. When we're doing something like this, this is called the learning zone. This is when we, we learn, we make mistakes, and we learn from those mistakes, okay? Uh, when we do a project, a completely different project, like if you look up the video on wavy lines, you know, the wavy line design, that's our first project that's when you are in the performing zone. So this is our learning zone, and then a project will be our performing zone. That's when we have to minimize our mistakes. This is when we make our mistakes, okay? So in these boxes, we're just gonna fill them in solidly, each value, and we're gonna use a 2B, and just like in my other video on how to hold our pencils, let's hold our pencil back. Make sure we're not doing this and white knuckling it, okay? Just back up. When we're shading, we want to get, and again, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the box. Um, we want to use, when we're shading, we want, val um, we want to have layers make our value, not pressure. Like, there'll be a little bit of pressure, but we want to build layers on top of layers in order to create a darker value. We don't want to just dig in and make it super dark. This 2B pencil will not get us an extreme black, like this black. That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna be this dark. Um, we would need like a six or an 8B um, to get this dark. And we're only using a two, so we're just gonna make it as dark as we can, all the way as light as we can, right? Uh, sometimes, like I know right now, this is too light. 
but if I continue on and I start to make the, the next layer, the next value change, there should be a difference between the two. But if I notice that I'm hitting zero, like here or here, and I'm not supposed to hit it till here, I gotta back up and add some more darkness. So actually, I'm gonna go right now and I'm going to add another layer at an angle because that helps clog those those little white spots, those little pores, those open open areas that making this seem like gray instead of black. So I'm just going to add a diagonal uh, value there. I'm gonna add a little diagonal here, but I'm, I'm easing up on my pressure a little bit. So I wanna slowly build my value up because I don't want it to be darker than this one. We gotta keep it lighter. Try and keep your hands out of this too, so that way we don't uh, smear it all over. We're not using the stub on this. We're not using the stub on this. We're not even using the stub here. Lucky you, we'll get to use the stub here. This is where we'll, we will practice the stub for the first time, okay? <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go through and start adding my value. And if it looks a lot like the one I just did on the left, then I gotta go back to the left. Like I tell my students, there is no prize for being done first. This is not just go through the motions. This is learning. You need to take your time, pay attention to what you're doing, and you have no idea what you might be able to accomplish if you actually put forth the effort. Learning is all about effort. If we could learn just by absorbing that would be fantastic, but that's not the way we we learn. Okay, so there's, you should see a little bit of a value change. I might have to go back here, make this a little darker. I think I will real quick, just a little bit. Try to get another shade darker. That's pretty good. Then I'm gonna go lighter here again. Again, it's all about pressure and layers. Uh, on your screen, this may this may look um, too light, too blown out. What I call blown out is just overexposed. It's just too much light, uh, and you, you might not even see this very well. But I'm going to keep going. We're, we're going to try and get all the way to the end here. Um, I also don't like a really sharp point uh, to the pencil because you can get sharp lines on there. So every, every, as you're shading, try to rotate that pencil in your hand so that way it kind of rounds the edge because we don't want any sharp lines uh, in our value. See, like right there, I've already, I just made some sharp lines and that's the problem. That's why we have to rotate it. Right now, this is darker than this one. That means I'm gonna have to go back and do all four of those again. And that's not a huge deal because I was probably gonna have to do it anyways. But now you can see what a sharp edge is gonna do. It's gonna make a darker value. Softer edge is gonna be a softer value. You see that? So that that's almost like this, if not, Close to that. So now I've got to go back and make this one darker. I'm rotating that pencil in my hand now so I can oh, loosen up that edge. See that dark line I just put there? It's just too sharp. Sometimes people will break the tip of their leads off and then kind of grind it down a little bit on another sheet of paper just to get a little softer edge. But the more you work on one side, the sharper that other side is going to get. You want to be careful of that. If you just use pressure and too much of it and not worry about layers, you're going to turn it shiny. It's just going to become shiny. You're going to ruin your paper. It's going to be all like wavy and stuff. Um, we don't want to do that. Uh, when my students make their self portraits. Sometimes their hair is gonna be like really dark. A lot of people have black hair or really dark hair and then the lighting that I use for it, uh, it, it will end up looking like they've got shiny gray hair and they're too young to look like they've got hair as a 90 year old or whatnot. You know, we don't want them to be, we don't want their portrait to look like somebody else or some other era or some, uh, an older person that they don't look like yet. We don't wanna speed up the aging process. These kids need to stay young. So we don't, we don't wanna just go pressure 
and make it uh, push really hard on our pencil. We want to make it happen naturally. I think this is pretty good. I think I think I've got a, a decent progression going. This one might be able to lighten up a little or darken up just a smidge. Um, and now I got to be careful of my pressure because of that sharp point. I don't want to go to the next one and have to go back because that's probably about as dark as I'm going to be able to get that one. I might be able to go to tick darker, but that's it's going to be. Uh, Hard to get there. Again, pressure, all about pressure. I'm getting close. This is supposed to be my white, but I'm getting close. Like one of these two might be my white, which means I'm going to have to go back and make some things darker and I'll have to decide where that's going to be. If you don't have a sheet like this at home, do your best. If you're doing this at home, um, you know, get a ruler and make, you know, 10 inches, you know, turn your paper one way or do these as like three quarter inch or whatever. And just get a ruler and make this happen. Give yourself that uh, space to do this uh, creating. Uh, if you can't do this, if you can't make this at home easily, uh, then just skip to this and pay attention to your blending uh, when we get to that part, but don't don't stress about it if you don't have this, this same sheet at home. If I have a way of connecting a document to my video, like on YouTube, then I'll do that, but I don't know if I have that ability. This is getting really difficult to get light with this 2B. I mean, I'm barely touching the paper. I'm nervous about going to my next one. I'm also nervous that these two look the same. So I'm gonna go one more over here and try and make this as light as I possibly can. And then I might have to go back and darken this one up and maybe even this one, we'll see. Just trying to get that lead to round out a little bit before I head into this last one. And if I do it in small sections here, I can see that I'm able to get it pretty light. This would be that lightest value. I think I will go back and darken up one of the other ones, but boy, am I just barely touching the paper. I almost feel like I'm doing surgery or something. Like I just I can't go through the surface. I can't, don't push any harder. Don't rotate my pencil. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it right there. And then I'm gonna darken this one up, I think. I think we're darker than that one. I think I'm gonna go back and fix this up a smidge. Okay, I think I've got, I think I've got it pretty well. I gotta be careful not to make this one too close to that one. I think I've still got an okay transition going through. Yep, always make sure you back up from it. You know, you can't see me doing it, but I'm sitting back so I can see from a distance and evaluate. Um, you don't ever wanna just stare at your artwork up close and then say you're done or never look at it from a distance to make sure that you've got everything. that You've gotta look at it from a distance to make sure that you've got things in the right places. Okay. All right, now this one, uh, this is the way that I'm gonna turn my paper slightly here. This is the way I, I tell my students to do this. So I'm gonna do it like kind of a small strip of value all the way across, and that's gonna be my guide. So once I get this small strip the way I want it, 
then I can move down and I can do it wider. You don't want to just scribble the whole thing. What you'll end up doing is making these natural transition lines and we want to avoid that because we're not using the stub. You're learning how to control your pencil. That's the purpose of this as well. It's just learning your tools. You've got to learn how to use your tools. You don't want to rely on things like the stub. And I keep mentioning the stub, but I don't know if I shared with you what a stub looks like. Um, maybe I did, but this is a stub. So um, I'm going to use this stub down in this area a little bit and show you how to how to blend out your your uh, pencil lines. Okay. Anyways, so what I'm going to do just. I'm going to go dark here, and this is our, our guide. So I want to see these same values roughly underneath where I'm at, okay? This area here can look kind of the same if we're not careful, so we got to be careful of, uh, of this area. <clears throat> Again, it's all about layers. And if we get our layers just right, I'm, trying, I'm looking at this while I'm doing this and comparing how dark it is and then I'll start moving on and I should be getting lighter and we don't want that transition we shouldn't see a line um, <clears throat> forming here it should be a pretty smooth transition if we're doing this right I'm gonna start easing up on my pressure but I can already see that I'm easing up too much this is too light compared to that so I'm gonna go back here darken this up a little bit that's why I do this in a small strip first before doing the whole thing because then there's just too much to work with. So take your time, be patient. That's something a lot of students I find have a problem with is patience. And they're growing up in this society of instant gratification and Google, where if they want an answer to something, um, they don't necessarily want an experience, they want an answer. You can Google it, and Google gives you the answer in uh, you know less than a second, and they move on. Um, and I can remember the days when internet came out, or at least came out for me, um, when we had the dial-up modems, and you went in, turned your computer on, hit connect to the internet, and then you went out and had lunch because it took so long to connect and then you'd come back after lunch and you'd still sit out and wait for a few minutes before you finally got connected to the internet uh, we and and that's a you know somewhat my generation and before that there wasn't the internet uh, for like my parents uh, when they were growing up so you know patience is starting to wear thin because everything is becoming so fast and I think we all just need to slow down. Uh, we can't be in a hurry to get something done. Like in my class, you got 45 minutes. We're not going anywhere for 45 minutes. So if you finish early, you're gonna do it again. Um, so there's, there's no prize for being done first. We just need to take our time and make sure that we're learning. I think that's pretty good. I think that uh, transition is pretty good. I'm going to go down and try and mimic the same thing now that I have my guide right above. And again, I'm going to do it in probably two or three more strips um, just to make sure I don't create those weird transitional lines that happen when you shade and then you shade lighter and you got that weird dark line between the two. This. It's helpful to go in small areas at a time. If you try and go too long, it's just gonna look like you're scribbling. And we don't wanna scribble. That's not the purpose of this. See that natural line happening a little bit? So I just have to go over that on the one side, the darker side. I'm just looking at this. I'm just looking at the top one I've got going on, I'm trying to mimic that top value. I'm 
and then I fade off just in time for this to be white. I'm going to try and do all this in one here. I'm just going to be careful about it. If it doesn't work out, then I'll make it smaller. I just don't I want to avoid those transition lines. You got to watch stuff being underneath your paper. Uh, something under my paper, it made a little tiny black mark there, so you got to got to be careful. And after I get this whole thing done, I can look at it from a distance and see if there's any areas I need to smooth out or eliminate transition lines, so on and so forth. So right at the end here, I can see some lines happening and I want to be careful of that. Uh, of course, I just made a mark, but that's okay. Um, this is where if I had a blending stub, I would have started blending probably about right here and pulling that value down here. Um, anytime you blend, you don't start from where it needs to be blended to. You start way before where it needs to be blended to, so that way you have time to make a transition smoother. So I'm going to sit back from this. I'm going to look at it. I see a few little transition lines in here, and I'm going to try and smooth those out a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit darker here in the beginning too. I'm careful not to make anything too dark that I need to be light. I'm just building layers. You can't see how much pressure I'm using, so that's something I, I can't show you. Um, it's something you have to figure out on your own because it's your senses, your sense of touch, your sense of feeling. Um, so you just have to explore how light you're touching the paper, how heavy you're touching the paper, or how hard you're touching the paper. So that's just something you have to feel. I can't teach that. I can tell you, but I can't show you. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm okay with that. All right, so then I'm down here, we're doing the same thing we did up here, but we're starting down here. So we start dark down here, we get lighter, 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 and eventually this one's white, okay? So that's all we're doing here uh, is that same thing we see here, and then we'll do this uh, separately. And again, still small motions. I know this is a big space, and a lot of you are going to get bored or whatever it is, and you're like, oh, let's hurry up and get through this. This is a big space. Don't hurry up and get through it. There's no reason to hurry up. Just take your time. Go through in small motions. Get rid of those transition lines. Make sure we're getting the right darkness because you don't have to go over the whole thing again. If it's all too light, you might have to, but if we can go dark enough now and know that we don't have to come back, that would be great. Remember, we don't, we've don't. we only got eight transitions here, not 10 like up here. So I could make this 80 or 90 and then just go from there. So I don't have to make this as black as this thing. And the reason I want you, I have this built like this, is so that way you can get in the motion and the habit of going in the motion of where the, the contour of the shape is. So when you're down here shading, you're going to shade, you know, in this motion. You're not going to go straight across because a straight line on a curved object is going to make flat. So we want to make sure that we are um, trying to stay in this and get used to turning your paper. I'm just not turning my paper as much uh, so I can try and keep the camera angle where I want it. So look how high up this goes. These go up pretty high. So a lot of students will end up do, doing this like kind of little crescent moon thing right here and they don't go all the way up as far as they need to. So we have to pay attention to what you're doing when you're doing it. So that way when you do it for real, uh, it'll translate, it'll work really well for you. And still work on your blending with your pencil. That's gi that's giving you the control because you don't want to rely on, I mean, I find it pretty annoying when I got to keep switching uh, supplies. So I don't want to keep going back and forth to my stub. If I can just shade without my stub, that'd be great. 
I don't have to keep going back and forth. I can just use the same pencil or whatever it is that I'm using. That would be fantastic. This last one is real tough. I gotta try and keep it real light. So I don't want it to look like the last one. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's gonna work out just fine. Um, I could go back and make this darker um, a little bit, but I think it's okay. It does transition fairly well. Uh, it is a little light, but again, I only had eight pieces, so I kind of chose the 80 to zero um, <clears throat> instead of having 10, or a 10 like up here. So the next thing we got to do is we've got to learn how to shade a sphere. So we'll dive into that next. <laughs> 